All right. Good morning, Cyber Friend. It's the Midi Man. Again, coming at you from Walker Studio. Studio B. Back here and uh, taking a, I would say, a break from the composition and all the book writing. But believe it or not, it's about 4 a.m. I'm yet at it. Brainstorming and whatnot. But something but came on my heart that I wanted to come and break in on this thing in the process of having a deacon board me in this morning in a few hours and I would let my thoughts gather and something that I was laid on my heart to do in the which I got a, a message and everything and God laid it on my heart to do this video um, in which I'm going to call the title of this video Don't Get Caught Up People in Religion Don't Get Caught Up in Religion I'm going to name it some something what the title going to be something to similar to that nature uh, the reason why I say that is because Jesus Yeshua the Hebrew name Jesus, Yeshua, is not into religion. That's going to blow a lot of people's mind. Jesus hates religion. I'm going to tell you why. Because religion is just what it says it is. Religion, man-made. It's not God-made. I could go on with that, but I want to... I don't want it to, to deviate into that right now and lose my train of thought. The real reason why I came back to do this video this early in the morning, uh, which I mean, I'm, it's okay with me. I'm up anyway. Um, I do my best work overnight, people. I don't know why, but since my illness, my late night, overnight is when I do my work. And you would think that I would, it would not be that way, but let me go back in time. Let me go back in time. I, I did a video, live video feed earlier uh, about let's go back. Looking back, I think it was. But I want to say let's go back. I want to go back in time a little bit to explain something to y'all if I can. If I can. Because a lot of it I don't understand myself. But I'm going to relate to you, I'm going to give it to you like it, get, like it came to me. I thank God always for life, health, and strength. I've always thanked him for that, especially since on last year. It was February the night, people. Like I said, I wanted to put this here in, in the form of telling the story to give God the glory in which I'm still going to do it, perhaps. I'm, I'm still not certain about that book thing, but if I do, if I do it, believe me, it's going to be till God be all the glory. But let me just, I want to, I'm trying to share this with some people that I've seen make a few statements and everything, and I don't want you to be led wrong. I don't have all the answers at all, but let me give you what I can. February the 9th, 2018, that will be a Friday that I will never forget. It was, look on your calendar, go back, you'll see it was on a Friday. Um, on that particular Friday, that was a program that was being given at my church in the honor of our former pastor. Dr. Donnie D. Green. It was coming up to his anniversary. And me, I had started the uh I had started up again on auxiliary that it used to be. One of the church auxiliary that used to be was called the Pastor's Aid Study that the church had dropped. No one had 
at least no one else had tried to pick it up in years. It was like Pastor Zay study was when I was a child coming up, and the lady that used to be a part of it, we used to call her affectionately Sister Laura Burks. We call her Cutting Laura. She was the one that always used to take up the pastor's aid, especially on Second Sunday. And I noticed that that had dropped, and it was something that was had been forgotten. So I decided that I would try to pick it back up. And because it does just what it said, it aids the pastor. Well, I caught a lot of beef and a lot of slack on that, uh, believe it or not. I caught a lot of beef and a lot of slack on it, but nevertheless, I went on anyway. And two of my sisters there at the church, they began and they began to offer me assistance, and they decided they would offer their assistance to help me out with the thing because being a musician, a lot of times I would have to try to get up from the keyboard and try to take the box out front, this place, and and everything like that. There, so a lot of times. If I'm busy playing keyboard, I couldn't do it at that particular time. So I had two of my sisters. I will call their name, Sister Anna and Sister Ruth. Those of you local, you know who I'm talking about. And we were getting this program. Matter of fact, it wasn't my idea. It was not my idea to do the program last year on this. Well, not last year. Yeah, it was last year, 2018. But it was, I believe, my two sisters. It was their idea to give this here program and start it up. And I don't know whether it was Sister Ruth or Adam that had the original idea, but I know it wasn't none of my idea, but they told me about it, and I, I thought it was a good idea. It's going to assist the pastor, and it's going to help the pastor. So I was automatically all for it. Because think about it, how could I be the founder or I should say the restarter of the pastor's aid study and then kick against what we're trying to give him. That would have been crazy. But at any rate, that's what we were doing on that particular Friday, February the 9th of 2018. I was at church. And people, I'm trying to help y'all about this religion thing. This is how I come out on deal and I don't not care for religion, just like Jesus did. All I remember, I was getting ready that day, and I had everything. I was so glad to be able to get ready to go over there to have this program. I didn't know what to do. I was excited, and I was glad of it. And that particular Friday, that earlier that day, I had a client that called one of my, my, one of my computer clients. I told you all, I'm a computer tech. I'm a computer tech. I had a client, one of my clients, her name, Miss Lorraine Curry. And I had to go down, and she was having some issues with, I believe it was Quicken. It was something badly wrong with the program, and it wasn't working right in the, within the network and everything. So I had to get both of those things running right away. And the thing of it is, I got it working. And if I'm not mistaken, Miss Lorraine Curry, her husband, who was the bank president, first state bank, if I'm not mistaken, in this area, those of you local know what I'm talking about, his name was Charles Curry. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's what it was. It was on that particular Friday. We, I know earlier I had met him. Met him face to face. Had never met him before. And I want to say that day, that particular Friday, that he did come into her insurance office where I went, went down because she was on the right of insurance. And where I was that particular Friday. And I spoke with him on that particular Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Because like I said, y'all, there was a lot of things went on that Friday. But at any rate, Fast forward on to that evening. I, the, the, the program I think was going to start around 7, 7.30 at my church. My niece, my niece, Shakovia, came and picked up me and Bonnie. 
I made a stop at the local store up here, right on 82, getting ready to go toward Cuthbert, my hometown, to my church. Picked up some Coca-Colas. The girl that was inside the place, she would not let me carry my own Coca-Colas to the car, to the, to the vehicle. Because I guess she saw that I was I guess she she began to see something in me that I didn't even realize. She wanted to take those Coca-Colas to the truck for me, which she did do, because she saw that I wasn't. She saw that my my strength, my physical, uh, my physical appearance, it wasn't right to her, because she volunteered and took mine to the car for me. I didn't pay no attention. I went on, got on back in the vehicle. Got to the church that night, that evening. Place we went on inside the church, went in the annex, carried the, the Coca Cola, put them downstairs. Then I went on up in the sanctuary along with Bonnie. She went on up there and everything. We getting ready for the program, and I saw my buddy. He was up there early. My buddy, old Pete, we call him. Y'all probably don't. Probably, those of you local know who I'm talking about. Pete, Pete Murphy. We call him Pete. His name Felton. He was doing mics and sending up the mics for the group called Perfect Praise was going to be there that night as well. So Pete was there doing a preliminary setup, and so I was talking to Pete, and yet that's didn't know what was about to happen. Didn't know it. My buddy Daryl, he came in before Floyd. Cause I never, I never did recognize that Floyd even ever came to the church that night. That's just how bad it was, people. I'm telling you, I didn't know how, how sick I was. I didn't, really. But I remember talking to Pete, me and Pete, from the very get-go. And I remember trying to do something with Daryl with the keyboard. At that time, we had an issue with the keyboard, hook up or something. But we did get it going. After that, y'all, I don't know nothing. Let me. Let me put that again. I'm just all of you people that are worried about religion. Let me tell you something. After that point, I didn't know nothing. I don't remember my buddy Floyd coming in the church. I don't remember talking to him. The groups, Perfect Pray, Big Bethel, all of my brothers and sisters, Daryl, Mama Jean, Danny's his sister, all, every I don't remember talking to no one. I I just barely remember anything other than me talking to Pete and Dara at the very beginning of the program. I couldn't tell. I, I didn't even know who even got up to do the, the worship service to, to bring to open up the service for that particular night. I They say I did remarks. I don't remember no remarks. I don't even remember being at the play, people, after, that, after a certain point. God knows my buddies. Daryl and Floyd, been knowing them a long time. They, I was sick, but didn't realize just how sick I was. Daryl and Floyd came back over here and made me. Matter of fact, Daryl, Floyd said, I wouldn't listen to him. Because, see, I don't remember none of this. Floyd said, I wouldn't even listen to him. But he said, Daryl was the one that talked. And one, whatever Daryl told me, it got my attention. And I got up here, and Daryl and Floyd got me to the emergency room early that Saturday morning. I say it like that, because it was after midnight. Let me tell y'all something, people, about religion. Religion is nothing. When I got to the hospital, emergency room, one of the doctors, not my main primary doctor, Dr. Giada, but it was another doctor that was there. They didn't understand how I could just be so at rest. He even made the statement, he said, how can you, he, this guy is, don't even show no kind of emotion at all. That's what he said about me. He said, this guy ain't even showing no emotion at all, regardless of what we say and what we telling them about this situation in his condition, he's not showing no kind of emotion. Well, let me tell y'all why. 
I don't know why, but I know I had a peace. I had a peace. I can't even explain. But I can tell you that from ex knowing and from the experience of being trained and being raised in the Bible and about who God really is, I knew that I might have not known the severity of the sickness and the illness that I was undergoing at that time, but I knew I served a big God. No fear whatsoever. Now, don't ask me how. Don't ask me how. But I know I was at total peace. Total peace. And then people all oh, fast forward and on from that night not knowing just how ill I, bear, I was and how and I was very in grave danger because I had gangrene. Had done set in. That's why I had to lose my toe. It was amputated. Gangrene had set in and was going through my body. And if I had not got immediate attention, y'all know what would have supposedly would have happened. But like I said, thank God for the peace. I had peace. I don't understand it. Can't tell you. Only thing I know is we must trust God at all costs. He's the one that give us that peace. I don't know where it come from, but I know it come from him. That peace, I mean, I don't know why. I don't know why at that particular point that I had that type of peace. But let me tell you something. That peace never left me. All last year, I had four procedures. Four times I went up on that anesthesia last year. Never, no fear, none. And I was at perfect peace every time. I can't explain to y'all how that happened, but I know it happened. So this is come I'm saying I know where it come from. So I can tell you, trust God. Don't trust religion. Forget about the Baptist church. Forget about the, the Presbyterian church. That ain't got nothing to do with your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you ask God, you ask God for all of your information. Take it from him only. The Holy Spirit will be your guide, and he is our comforter. You don't have to worry. Don't worry about it. Don't try to figure everything out. You just study the Bible. Study your word and ask him for his direction, and he'll direct your path. Don't, don't rely on what just everything many man tell you. Even though many man is going to try to tell you the best he can to tell you the truth. And I'm quite sure there are many others that would do the same thing. But you get on your knees and you pray to your God yourself and get your Bible and read and study it. And then that what you do. And you're going to read a lot of stuff that you ain't going to understand. That's when you need to ask the Holy Spirit. He will direct your path. Don't worry about all that religion. It ain't nothing but a the, the denomination. The reason why we got so many different denominations is because it's just like with other things. Everybody want to have their way. I don't like what you got, so I break off you and I get my own. This is why all these denominations came. But but from the original, God never meant for all this stuff to be like the way we got it, people. Believe it. Jesus do not like separation. He do not like division. He doesn't like that. He like oneness. He said, I pray that we might be one, even as him and his father were one. Now, can I explain that to you? No. Nope. I'm just saying do it. Jesus said it, so let us do it. Let us let him live out his life through us. In other words, let him do a work in us. Don't worry about just because you can't figure out everything. You is something you ain't going to never figure out. You're not God. You don't have to, don't have to, have, don't let everything you've got to be before you can accept something, you got to figure it out because you're going to be left behind a long way trying to figure everything out because don't none of us know everything. Just let God be who he is. Let him be God. He will direct your path. He will give you that peace that you need even in the worst time. Y'all, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I've been there. Now, like I say, I don't claim that I have done went through everything because there are some people that went through much more than me. There are some people that have been through much, much more than I have. And they done came out on the good side as well. 
Don't drown yourself before you get to the river. That's what my great-grandma used to always tell me. There's always hope. There's always hope. Don't ever give up. So this is what I'm saying to all of my cyber friends, brothers, and my sisters. Don't get so caught up on religion. Don't get caught up on religion. It ain't about what church you belong to or what church you go to. That ain't got nothing to do with your relationship with God. You just better make sure you got a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you got that, you doing fine. Go to any church you want to go to. It doesn't matter. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't have anything to do with what type of church you belong to, whether it be the Baptist, the Methodist, or the Presbyterian, Pentecost, on and all that. That means nothing with Christ. But it's your relationship with Jesus that's going to let, going to make the difference between you being in the new world that is to come and not being there. That's what you want. That's what you want. So with that being said, Mitty Man, I got to get up, man. I, I got a deacon board meeting here in a few. I got to get up and get ready to go, y'all. But nevertheless, we thank God for all of you. And just remember what I said. It's not religion. Religion has nothing to do with it. Religion has nothing to do with this thing. But let God be just who he is. Receive Christ as your personal Savior, and you got it made. Believe me. This is me, the man, saying whatever you get, whatever you get into it, God, and then come on out of it because it's going to come to nothing. To the next video, next Bible study, whichever come for it. Middle man saying peace and good morning.